So welcome to the Legal Circle for those of you who are joining in. My name is Saray Turk and today I'll be hosting and moderating for you the session on COVID tech. So what the di digital transformations and economic transformations post the COVID era. Uh, today we have joining us Khulud Al Omnia. I hope I'm saying that correctly, Khulud, uh, the CEO of Forbes magazine. Um, there's not much more I need to say about that. I think everybody's aware of Forbes magazine released. Uh, we have CEO Hussein Al Mahmoudi from the Sharjah Research Technology and Innovation Park, and Joy Ajluni, former co founder of uh, Fetcher and a um, current fundraiser mentor and coach for startups. So today we're going to be hearing some interesting perspectives and hopefully quite different ones from our speakers. Um, what I'd like to start with is that. Uh, we've all been obviously following the news. We're all very keen to know about what's going to happen post COVID. I think we've all uh, heard enough about what's going on during COVID. I think a lot of us are suffering from um, webinar fatigue about uh, and listening to webinar about the current situation. So Legal Circle thought it would be good to, to focus on where next and, and hopefully an optimistic future. So today, what we'd like to hear from our presenters and speakers is what they see post-COVID is going to look like. So today, I'd like to start the discussion with Khulud. Um, Khulud, I really, I stole that term, if I can put it that way, from you, um, particularly from an article that you had drafted in Forbes magazine, um, and that was titled COVID Tech, Digital and Economical Transformations Post-COVID. So I think it would be great to start with you today and to get your views um, why you call it COVID tech and what you see the um, industry and are going to look like post COVID. So I'll hand it over to you. Yeah. Uh, hi, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, hi, everyone. And uh, uh, thank you for uh, including me for this conversation. And uh, it's very interesting because, you know, uh, and I'm glad that you are like my article because, um, you know, um, uh, when I um, uh, start, uh, I'm usually uh, when I'm writing my articles, uh, um, I have uh, like the same feeling of what is our reality it's coming from so when I see my daughter every morning and uh, uh, sitting with our, me and her sitting in the same table and using Microsoft team and I see oh my god I just I recently and uh, uh, starting using uh, the Microsoft team and then uh, I think oh, how is the new generation will be after uh, the new generation who start early having this technology skills in uh, seven um, seven year age, how will be in the future? What what is the kind of skills they will uh, adopt or or the what is kind of the skills will go in the future they have? So. And then I start, I say, okay, looking for everything around us. How is the technology? It's uh, uh, become, in, in, in uh, our uh, association, it's like become everyone in the technology. It's, we have no chance. It's become uh, uh, technology. It's not want. It's basic technology. It's not want. It's need. Become, it's, um, uh, if you want to order food, it's, uh, you have to go to application. If you want to um, uh, do anything, you should do uh, it through, um, um, through technology. So I'm looking around uh, every, everything's in home. It's uh, entertainment, it is uh, everything's around us. It show we are in technology. So um, uh, why I come in with this name because it is um, um, it's everything show in this is, uh, in situation or in this time we can, we are no longer sustain uh, ourselves independently without from from technology and this is the fact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you so much. You're you're right. I mean, I read that article and you in that article you broke down um, almost every single aspect of our life and showed how it is, as you say, inseparable from technology. Um, but the question is really, and I might go to Hussein and ask him this question: Is that what, did COVID and the current situation just highlight the need and highlight the fact that we're inseparable? Um, and is there going to be a trend post COVID, or has there really always? has there for the last few years been a trend um, around technology because you say the, the Sharjah Technology and Innovation Park was established in 2012 and for those people who don't know it it's, a, it's an innovation park that attracts um, high-tech and advanced technology companies um, to Sharjah 
and you look at specifically, you know, the Internet of Things, big data, I, IoT, um, sorry, IoT is Internet of Things, but uh, robotics. Um, and so you've been doing this now for a number of years. Did this come out of COVID and, or has it always been around? And what do you see post-COVID in those industries? Thank you. Uh, I think uh, countries and, and nations expected uh, these developments. I think what COVID uh, has done is really accelerated the implementation of these uh, uh, technologies. And uh, it created a necessity for countries and for companies and entrepreneurs to adopt these technologies and, and implement them uh, to survive, basically. Uh, uh, we at the Sharjah Research and Technology Park is really a reflection of what the UAE government's been uh, trying to uh, develop and execute for the past 20 years. This has started in the early uh, 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 90s, uh, 20s basically, or 90s, even, with uh, the government adopting things like smart uh, uh, government uh, activities and also recently with the adoption of the fourth industrial revolution technology. So at the park at the moment, we're trying to create enablers to be able to encourage uh, uh, cities, encourage com uh, companies, entrepreneurs to really venture into these new type of technologies, whether they are robotics uh, technologies, whether they are uh, uh, um, uh, uh, very important topic like, for example, agriculture technologies, which really addresses the, 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 the topic of food security whether uh, 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 topics related to supply chain with, for example, printing of uh, 3D materials, whether things related to transport and logistics, uh, uh, or uh, you know, e-commerce, uh, things related to security. So the park is really as an enabler to really push these technologies out. And we've been very uh, lucky to have a group of companies now, which they are doing different uh, development on key uh, uh, industries that we believe that will flourish in the next uh, coming months. Okay, so are there any particular uh, industries that you're seeing flourishing more than others now post or during COVID and post COVID? I think we see uh, industries related to healthcare uh, that is flourishing, whether the development of the uh, uh, materials or equipment related to healthcare, or the introdu introduction to new system that will really transform our healthcare industries, I think. And I think this is very positive. We are also uh, seeing technologies related to the implementation of 3D printing, uh, related to, again, uh, healthcare, but also to transport and logistics. We are seeing things related to uh, education uh, as a big area that we, we see uh, you know, being being as a capital of education in this region, and luckily being in Sharjah, we see really many companies now trying to come up with new technologies that support you know uh, the, the new reality of education and e-learnings and, and 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 using virtual reality and augmented reality to deliver materials. So we're seeing education, we're seeing healthcare, we're seeing agriculture, and the new industries that are really developing as we go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So can you give me some examples of some of the, I guess, healthcare perhaps startups and um, some of the 3D? Because I recently read an article um, on a number of, or success stories, if we can put it that way, um, of companies at the park. So if we just use those for the benefit of the audience as a, um, an example of the type of uh, companies and the type of technology being used by those companies to to enhance industries such as healthcare and 3D. Um, can you give us some examples of some of those? Well, some I can, of I can of what they're three, doing that makes them so attractive? I can give you three quick examples. One of them, of course, we use 3D technologies to print uh, face shield uh, masks, uh, and and we are also using 3D to technologies to use things related uh, uh, to to construction industries using antibacterial, anti-virus uh, materials and coopers. So this is, has to do with material science. But also we are very proud to have companies like, for example, NAPTA, which is really redefining the healthcare system in the UAE by basically developing a hybrid uh, solution, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, having traditional methods of delivering healthcare and digital uh, method of delivering healthcare, especially with focus on women. So we see these type of opportunities being created uh, using new type of technology, and I think these things will only grow going 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 uh, uh, in the future. Mm -hmm. Khalid, if I can just come back to you, because I mean, you've got access to CEOs, heads of departments and ministries, and I guess you hear a lot of the times about what developments are happening in different industries. Can you tell us a bit about maybe the trends that you're seeing from uh, various people in industries related to tech? I think, um, yeah, I think it's the communication. As the communication, it's very booming. And we see how it is like war between all the companies, between Zoom, Facebook, and Microsoft. And you know, it's uh, recently Zoom uh, um, uh, with a competition with Facebook. And every day we re we reading news about the uh, competition between the communication companies. And um, uh, recently, Cla uh, recently Zoom uh, take uh, support from Oracle to having uh, uh, cloud. And uh, cloud, uh, I would like to talk about the cloud system because now it is uh, it also as they mentioned it's um, the technology now it is uh, adapting quickly the companies uh, adopting qu technology faster because everyone uh, with working from home need cloud need more uh, uh, access for the information on the company and um, uh, it is like today honestly we see the ecosystem we keep talk keep talking about ecosystem long time ago we everyone talking about fintech about uh, uh, um, telehealth we're talking about communication we're talking about but it's everyone talking from and the blockchain and all this technology but today honestly we see and we are witness for the real digital transformation because today it is the re the real tra tra uh, the real technology transformation, and um, what I see the cloud today, and we uh, cloud uh, our need become for more and more for a cloud and for five um, uh, G, which is uh, uh, if you see um, there is a lot of if, if, um, uh, we need more to uh, technology faster. We need uh, uh, and we see how is the uh, environment become much better when it is uh, everyone in home and we not there is no no any uh, transportation or logistic or any kind of uh, um, uh, of um, you know uh, outside it is not have any carbon or they affecting the environment so we see how it's become much better then now uh, i think everyone all the governments they are think seriously with the uh, 5g because it's become need and it will make our um, our uh, adapting for tech technology easier because we our requires it more and more. And about other trends, I see uh, now we're using Zoom. It's become easy for everyone to communicate and everyone uh, work as usual, business as usual. We're doing our business easily, smoothly, focusing in our business through communication skills and we're doing our meeting. And I think I had the conversation with one of the um, owners of a private jet. They say, I think in future they will not, the businessman, they will not go traveling for 17 hours to attend event in uh, America or in Europe to traveling 17 hours or 15 hours in the flight to go to attend events or meetings. Today, I think the businessmen, uh, they will also uh, adopting the technology with using Microsoft team, uh, uh, not Microsoft, I mean all the technology, Zoom or Microsoft or Facebook or, or this uh, technology. It will be consumer behavior it will be totally different our habits of the how we using technologies how everything's it be involved in our life everywhere in business or in normal life everywhere everywhere and I think the startups it will be booming because there is it should be considering the uh, like uh, uh, invest more in technology, investing more in uh, startups, investing more in uh, technology. We are in Emirates, and Emirates is very advanced in technology. But other countries, it's and we're not having this kind of, um, uh, we don't feel it about, it's, it's everything's online. Our, you know, 
our government and our immigration, our gov if, uh, even court, everything's going well without uh, any uh, uh, bothering us how is we are in, in, in home, working from home. But other countries in Middle East, I don't want to mention names, really, really suffering with have no access for the internet, it's not speed enough. Uh, the government shut down. It's no if you need any, if you need to do anything for, um, you know, your document or you need urgent document, you cannot have it because they don't have a gover a, a, a government um, and, and they they not um, uh, uh, still in um, a government. And I think um, it's um, technology. It is. It's only now. It's in in if in all our details of our life. So it sounds to me like the COVID tech is really going to be accelerated in some parts of the world and not other parts, but inevitably the whole world needs at some point to embrace technology to improve even their communities and accessibility to different things. Um, so thanks for that opinion, Khulod. Well, I wanted to pick up on one of the, what you mentioned, um, the point about startups, because I think this is where really Joy can come in and tell us her thoughts on um, you know, startups and in, in the space of technology. Joy, these days, startups and technology is almost like a synonymous word. So, you know, in my mind, if I hear startups, I think of technology. Is that the case? I mean, you're dealing constantly with startups and you, you're hearing their pitches, you're understanding their business concepts and, um, you know, hearing about opportunities here in the region. What I want to know is what startups are doing in the space of tech. What should they be doing if they're not already doing it? Um, and where you see the the industries, which 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 industry is going to have the most growth um, going forward post COVID? Hmm. Okay, so um, look, I I have very interesting background experience because I I started a startup in the United States and I sold it in a merger and acquisition deal. And I started one here in this region of the world. So I kind of have a very unique perspective of the differences of what it is to start a startup here in this region and what it is to start a startup in the United States in Silicon Valley, which is where I'm from. Um, I'm proud to say, and this is what I just wanted to, to get into a little bit. I've, I've raised over a hundred million dollars as a woman founder, probably the only woman who's raised there hasn't been any woman in the Middle East who's raised more money than I have for two startups. And because of that, I kind of have a really good understanding of the differences and what's needed. Everybody keeps talking about tech startups. There are a lot of startups that have no tech, <laughs> right? There are companies that are reaching billion dollar valuations with absolutely no tech. So startup and tech does not really go together. They're two different things. You can have a startup with zero tech. Mm -hmm. And I can give you an example. Uh, for example, there's a, there's a company called uh, Glossier, which is a product and they sell makeup in, in Los Angeles and they're a startup and they're worth b a billion, I think seven with the last evaluation. There are a lot of companies that have huge valuations with absolutely no technology. So it's not about tech. Startups are about coming into a new region with a new, or any region with a new idea and then doing something different and creating huge market share. It's all about grabbing market share. If you can get in and you could do it better than someone else and you can create a huge amount of customers, then you can create a billion dollar company with absolutely no tech. So that's, that's they're, not, they're not hand in hand. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that's a different perspective, but it's good. It's good to hear that because at the, you know, when you're looking at the news, when you're reading articles, um, and particularly now during this COVID period, it, it seems like it's all just about tech. So it's good to just have that, I mean, perspective and to keep things real so that those who are not, for example, or haven't adopted tech don't think that that's it for them. They're not going to be you know, in existence next year. But I guess if we do um, go back to technology, because today we, you know, our focus is on COVID tech. If we look at startups in technology, which of those industry, which industries um, is it necessary that they adopt tech? And then what do you see the trends amongst those tech startups? And where do you, I mean, being a fundraiser and seeing where there is opportunity to raise funds for startups, what particular areas of tech do you think is going to have the highest growth and, and possibly have an, a real appetite from investors in this region? 
So I know there's a big difference between, you know, Silicon Valley and of course the UAE. Um, I think that most of the people joining us today are from this region. So give us a little bit more perspective on this region. Um, look, I think that this region, I mean, everybody keeps talking about FinTech, right? Because banking here, sorry, without being personal or anything or hurting anyone's feelings, banking here is torturous. So I think FinTech for me is the number one place that, that we need to disrupt. If somebody can come up with tech where you don't need a bank, I'm in. I think that is a very important sector because I think banking really chokes a lot of us for speed. So FinTech to me is the number one thing, FinTech. How to basically eliminate the painfulness of setting up a bank account and how to, transactions of cash, how do you make it as easy as possible? That to me is the number one disruptor in this region. And I'm excited about it because you know, being in this region and having this problem means that you can create a solution. It means there's an opportunity. So I actually like emerging markets because we have a lot of problems that need to be solved, which means there's a lot of opportunity. And that's the exciting part about being in emerging markets, right? So I think FinTech is a big one. I think logistics is a huge one, but logistics is something that everybody's trying to solve. We heard today that Uber is out with the food industry, right? We also have heard in the news that the government of the UAE, of, the, of Dubai actually, is coming in to create their own Deliveroo experience to help food uh, delivery companies, restaurants, to deliver food. I don't know if anybody heard, read the articles about how Uber, was, Uber Eats is leaving. So I think the high cost of delivery for food um, and why a, a, a lot of restaurants are struggling because of this high delivery, they take a big chunk out. I think it's exciting that the government of Dubai has, has jumped in to, to do some kind of subsidy. I think, so logistics is a big one. I think you really need, uh, you really need advanced technology in logistics. And I think nobody has, has broken the code on logistics. We, nobody in the world, I believe, has broken the code on logistics. So I think, I think also uh, products are very, very, very hot ticket in the United States. Uh, you know, jewelry companies that have reached billion dollar valuations, makeup companies that have billion dollar. I think products are very, very, uh, I've invested myself in, in products and I have done incredibly well. So I think education, you know, I, I, I know everybody jumping on the bandwagon of the, the ed tech, but, um, you know, because we are schooling our children and I can see why everybody thinks that's exciting. But I know from a lot of my, my, my friends who have children, they can't wait to get them back into school. <laughs> so, I agree. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. You know. I had a friend of mine who said something really funny. She said, listen, if Corona doesn't kill my children, I'm going to kill them. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to get back to school. So I think going back to school is important. Um, I don't think, for me, I mean, you're asking my opinion. I don't think that is uh, as, 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 as big of a ticket. I think what we need to do in this region is look for global solutions, right? I think investors from other regions of the world don't want to look for a solution for Dubai or, or Abu Dhabi or Bahrain or any of the, of the GCC. They're looking for a global solution. So I think that in order for you to scale, you, you've got to get the attention of the international venture capitalists, for sure. I think the ecosystem here is still growing. We're still new. You know, we're learning. The VCs here are still learning. And it's a very small community of venture capitalists. And uh, so I think in order to scale, we definitely still need that bridge. We need that bridge between Silicon Valley and this region of the world. We need Silicon Valley money to invest in these startups as well to bring them to a global, to global scale. We need that bridge for sure, for sure. Okay. Um, I definitely hear you. Thank you for that perspective. I just wanted to go back to healthcare because I think COVID and the fact that, you know, we're speaking about COVID tech today. Um, yeah. Don't you see that the COVID period has really accelerated now and driven the need for um, healthcare startups? I mean, because you've got FinTech on your list, you've got EdTech, you've got... No. Um, Tech and logistics. No. What's your perspective then on healthcare? Because I thought my, I would have thought you said tickets on healthcare, health, health tech. You know, I, I think the tickets on health tech are, are I mean, the, 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 I'm not excited about health tech. I mean, in my pers personal perspective, it's not something that I'm, I'm overly excited about. Um, 
I think there's definitely some things that need to be disrupted in, in healthcare, no question, uh, as I do in the United States. But I, for me, it's not that. I, I don't think the COVID virus has anything to do with health tech. I think it's a virus that's going to pass. I don't think one has anything to do with the other. It, it only has put a more focus on our health. But uh, that's, I mean, you're asking my opinion to me. Yeah, no, no, that's absolutely fine. I'm just going to take it to Mr. Hussain because I, I have a feeling that he might have um, a different opinion. He said you touched on it before and you did talk about health tech, but what do you, what's your opinion now? So post COVID, given that you've seen what we've, you know, what the world has seen about um, access to the healthcare system or the lack of access, um, people with, you know, communicable and non-communicable diseases getting treatment for that. I mean, how do you, do you see that in terms of a hierarchy of, of, tech in different industries and and which of those will have more growth than others do you see health tech as being higher up on the list than where where joy put health tech or what's your view i think, I think this is a big question frankly and that's depends. okay i'm a lawyer i'm gonna have to ask these loaded questions <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll answer it I'll, I'll answer it this is a big question and i think it depends where you said uh, 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 you have a different perspective in the uae for example we import most of everything so i think for our local healthcare companies there are opportunities to grow we ourselves frankly missed up a, a huge opportunities uh, two or three years ago i engaged with beijing genomic institute to launch a genome sequencing for u.s population uh, you know it, i missed that opportunity if i you know, if, 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 if we executed that project, we would have been doing all the testing for COVID now, because, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, Beijing Genomic Institute is the number one now globally, and uh, we have signed with them some agreement three years ago with the university as well. So I think there are the, 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 the healthcare uh, uh, industry, it, it's definitely changing. And I think there are a lot of opportunities, but I agree with, with, with Joy is that we need to see the big picture and we need to scale. If we really want to go out, we need, and, and that's why, for example, what we do today uh, at, at the Sharjah Research and Technology Park, we are not talking about UAE alone. We're talking about the Middle East and Africa because you need a bigger market to be able to attract those big investors and VCs because our market is not big enough. But I think there are, I mean, I'll just give you a simple, a, a simple uh, uh, example about about uh, you know the the, the 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 sequencing of the genome in terms of you know uh, the, the having a better and healthier population and I think this is will grow and and there are a lot of side product for this sequencing uh, that has to do with different uh, uh, application uh, uh, for non communicable diseases to uh, birth to all kinds of things I'm not a, an expert in this but I think. In the UAE, we saw, for example, uh, the government a couple of days ago, uh, and Sheikh Ahmed, the Prime Minister, he said, one thing we need to do is we need really to focus on our healthcare system uh -huh. in the UAE. And I think this is across the region, because there is a big gap there. And I, I share the uh, Joy's point also with, with, for example, banking and, 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 and fintech. So those are big industries. I uh -huh. think, uh, you know, we, UAE can take a lead in coming up with, uh, you know, a regional solution that we can really uh, 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 spread uh, the way that, for example, Karim spread, the way that uh, souq.com, uh, uh, you know, grow. So I think the healthcare is, 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 a, is something that will change. I think the good thing, the governments are, uh, uh, are interested now to, to, to explore this, and this is a, a positive thing, I think. Well, I just wanted to say also, not to, not to interrupt you, Hussein, if I could, is that the reason why the health tech industry is so strong in the United States is because the university system supports it. So the education and the science and the labs that actually come up with these cures for, for, for COVID V and for cancer and for all the diseases, the education and the tech and the, the actual machinery stem from universities and they stem from funding from universities. So 
I think it's very hard. And the reason why I don't focus on, on uh, healthcare tech here is because we just don't have the infrastructure. We just don't have the schools, the universities. These things are coming from John Hopkins. They're coming from Stanford, Harvard, Cleveland Clinic. You know, we just don't, UCLA, you know, medical school, they, they have the schools to, to have the grants to, to come up with these innovations. And we just don't have the schools to do that. We just don't. Mm -hmm. I, 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 if I may, I think I agree with you to a certain extent. You know, uh, uh, Sharjah actually uh, was among the first to establish a university hospital. Uh, this belonged to the University of Sharjah. So it's the first university to have a whole, a full-fledged hospital, uh, 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 you know, and the whole idea was to follow these big universities' uh, steps in, the, in, in developing these capabilities. But also, a couple of days ago, we saw the announcement uh, 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 from Abu Dhabi uh, where, with the stem, uh, stem cell uh, 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 mm -hmm. test for COVID. So I think there are these initiatives, but I think we need to be more coordinated if I talk about UAE, when it comes to this, I think we definitely need uh, more buy-in from government and more buy-in from the private sector. And I think, I hope, really, that this COVID will, you know, uh, uh, spark a new way of looking at things, more practical approach of doing things and more uh, 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 focused approach to do things. But I, I think I, I, I agree with you to a certain extent. But I think, let's see how the new reality will look like. <laughs> yeah, I think we're all very curious to see. These hospitals are teaching hospitals. So every time there's a patient that comes in, there's a study that's done, you know, and that information is done. And there's, you know, so, you know, there's a whole infrastructure with education. And I, I agree with you that, you know, it's coming, it's coming, but, you know, we need it's world class. It's interesting that health tech seems to be a big area and it's pretty debatable. So the good thing is we're going to have hopefully in our webinar series, um, one webinar where we're just looking at health tech and we'll get some health tech experts coming in. And I'm pretty sure my guess is they're going to say tickets on healthcare, but that's because they're in that industry. So it's you know only natural to promote the industries that you're in. So, but it was great to hear the perspective of Hussein and Joy on that one. What I might do now is just take, pick up on a, um, something that Hussein mentioned was souk.com. So that's an e-commerce um, site. So um, I've been following the news and one of the things that has come up is that um, on the 2nd of May, actually, in the National, um, they were talking about there being an increase of about 172% um, at the DED for e-commerce sites and e-commerce licenses. Um, so, uh, you know, nobody, nobody touched on that as the, for the post-COVID era. Um, Khulud, what do you think that's about where, that's where, and That's where fintech comes in, right? Because yeah. if you make the, the payment system and the returns to get your money back easy, you're going to increase e-commerce. That's where the fintech comes in handy, right? So, so true, but it seems like they're doing it the other way around. So if we look at what's trending and if we look at the behavior of, um, I guess, people who are setting up companies, it's much easier to set up an e-commerce site and work out, you know, a way through PayPal or something that's quite easy than have a fintech solution. Fintech in itself, as you say, is quite, um, it's necessary, but it's complicated. And that's why we haven't seen any huge or, I guess, revolutionary ideas in fintech, if, if I can put it that way. And I hope I'm not insulting anyone. But Khulud, what's your view on e-commerce? What do you see the trends are? I think you mentioned something about that in your article as well. Can we talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Uh, E-commerce, um, it's uh, based of the research, it will, be, uh, it will, it will grow 6.5 trillion by 2020-2022. So I think there is a lot of opportunity it's, uh, uh, to um, having more e-commerce. And, you know, it will not be the big, the big uh, uh, giant, it's a uh, dem uh, demand, in, in the, the, they will not be only in the market, like uh, Alibaba or Amazon or, or Amazon or uh, uh, Sook.com. We will see a lot of e-commerce. It will be, uh, um, I know we have very, uh, a lot of startups and the, in the market and local brands, and uh, uh, we see a lot of um, a, a merging of the companies, like what, what happened with Dobizel and uh, Beaut.com, they are uh, merged together. And we'll see a lot of um, companies will looking very serious about e-commerce business because every mall will have 
uh, his own um, uh, own platform for the e-commerce. So I think it's we will see a lot of opportunity in the e-commerce in the future. Great, great. Do you agree, Joy? I mean, what's your? I guess you did say that it needs the ecosystem. So it's fintech yes, I, and e-commerce. I, I, I think I think the greatest obstacle to e-commerce and somebody who who sold my e-commerce business to Moda and somebody who built the logistics. I kind of have a really good understanding of logistics and e-commerce because that's my expertise, right? Um, I think until we figure out the cash on delivery problem and eliminate COD and, and the ease of returns, I think e-commerce will boom when we have those two tickets in hand. How to, get the, how to get people to shop online and then return the product the next day and get money back immediately. I think returns and I think, um, uh, you know, logistics, uh, I think these are two things, the, and, and the cash payments and the elimination of COD are the biggest obstacles to e-commerce. But yeah, absolutely, e-commerce is booming. You could see how it boomed during the COVID thing. Nobody was ordering anything. Everybody was ordering everything online. online. And, and yeah. hence, the only people who were actually doing well were the delivery companies, because we had no choice except to get stuff delivered. So. Look, I think e-commerce is, is going to stay strong. I think it was strong during, CO, during this whole crisis, and I think it will continue to be strong, and I think people were going to focus on it, and I think more venture capitalists are going to focus on uh, solving the problem of last-mile delivery, which, in my opinion, nobody in the world has yet mastered. Uh, and I think, and I think COVID-19 show us the gaps of the market. How is the the gaps in everywhere in our life. Where is the gaps between um, uh, the link between if we need uh, a strong fintech system to support uh, the e-commerce, we need logistic and to make, because you see in uh, other countries like UK, how it is the e-commerce easy. You order the same products and the same day you can return in the, in the box and you, you know, it's easy, the it's ecosystem. The box. Right. It's exactly. it and here, here it's very complicated. And I think you need only to invest in the ecosystem and all the uh, government and the private sectors. They have to work together to improve all this ecosystem and to see where's the gaps. What this is? It's like for us as experience or it's exam for us to see to discover and to relieve to to discover where's the where's the where's the problems. As I mentioned. We keep talking about ecosystem, I think, five years ago, and nothing changed. But to after, exactly. And now we will have to back to work with, we will see the big change. Everyone should restructuring the, the models of the business. You know, I came to Dubai seven years ago to do an e-commerce logistics company, and not one thing has changed for the way that we do business. You order online, you get the package, you can't return it, COD, nothing. Not one thing has changed. Struggle with it. You keep it and you, <laughs> yeah. you keep it and you're stuck with it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, you know, it, it's, it's- Well, you uh, go into store and return it, but you, as you're right, you don't just, you know, put a sticker on the box and, and send yeah. it back, which would make things more efficient. And, and You know, in the United States, when I shop, honestly, and I need a dress and as women, uh, uh, sorry, Hussein. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing a girl. I'm doing a girl analogy, but I need Love a dress, that. right? I order. I don't. I go online. I don't order one. I order ten because I try them on at home. And then what winds up happening is I need one, but I like two, so I wind up buying two because I'm home. I put them on. I can see what they look like. I can take my time, think about it. So the problem is I wind up returning the eight, and I keep the two. All I need to do is put a sticker on the box. I return it. That's it. It's finished. The, the, the problem is, is that here I don't have the comfort of ordering 10. So therefore, in order for e-commerce to boom here, we have to implement a, a, a fintech solution where we return the money to the customer immediately. They don't have to wait six months or six years or five months or four weeks. You get the money immediately back to your pocket and it gives people more comfort to order more. This is a big problem. And like I said, nothing has changed. Seven years, nothing I has know. changed. I know. I think also, you know, take example, like uh, Aramix or, uh, Aramix or um, 
DHL. If they have something for you, they calling you at six morning, waking you up. Where's your location? Is there your location? They're asking you, okay? You tell them yes. Then they will come um, uh, deliver after maybe second day, they will asking again, where's your location? You keep, it's like bothering with calls. Where's your location? You have my location. It's, it's still, it's also training and you need, uh, yeah, honestly, yeah, you have uh, all the suspicion. Well, uh, you know, you know what, you and I, we should get together and write an article. Do you know what the problem is? <laughs> you know what the problem is, honestly? The problem is, is that Lude, in the United States, my, my delivery driver is the same delivery driver for the last wow. 20 years. He wow. knows, he has the same route. He knows me, he knows my family. We invite him in for coffee. His son went to Stanford. Uh, he, he, he worked to put his kid through college. We know his whole story. But Joy, the do you think- is, The Sorry. problem is humanity. Because in the United States, these guys work for these delivery companies for 20 years. It's their whole life. They're not leaving. They're not here to visit for two years and leave. They're here to stay. So the company is their whole life. It's their whole life. So they invest their whole selves in this company. Because if the company succeeds, they get dividends. They stay in the company. They're not going anywhere. They stay for 20, 30 years. And they retire with this company. That's the problem is that if you want good service, you must invest in humanity. They, the, the people who work for the companies must be married, married through the companies. So, yeah. so although, although we're going to have then technological advances, you think that the human element must not be lost. So it should be a balance of technology to make things more efficient, but also that human element, I guess. And that, that's a very good point because we don't want to lose that, that touch. And, you know, I often ask myself that question when I'm dealing with many companies, you know, everything has gone online now. Everything is about technology. We can pretty much like what we've seen during the COVID period, you can remove the interaction, not so much between people because that still has to happen over, um, you know, over webinar, but you can pretty much, I mean, for example, that driver, um, you know, he would have had to drive less during the COVID period. I mean, you know, if he was in the UAE, there was a time where people were restricted in their, their movements. So, you know, having the benefit of technology in a time like this, and then people actually realizing that, that going forward, we might have even more viruses that put people in lockdown again. So how can we make our systems more efficient? How can our products be more technologically advanced? For example, one of the things that comes to my mind, and probably because I'm speaking to so many people in the drones industry, but in my mind, you know, when you, when Khulud is saying that they call her and they say, what's your address and how to get there? And I mean, I've even had situations where they've wound up at somebody else's house and rather than not my own, um, things like drones will start to now be more made use of um, to deliver packages to, oh, so Joy's, Joy's saying no, but I mean, there are so many companies that that I'm speaking to now that are, that are looking into drones. They're looking at even how to deliver Perhaps not food, Joy. Let, let me finish. Perhaps not food, maybe not clothing, but how we how we're going to transfer medical equipment to say rural areas, for example. That's you know that's another thing altogether. But technology, and particularly in those um, in those areas that we've touched on, I think is necessary. And yes, you can't remove the human element, um, but but I think there's go there is definitely a need post COVID to look at tech um, and look at it very closely. Joy is still disagreeing with me. He's saying, I wanted to go with you just on a point that Hulud um, meant, oh, sorry, I think it was Joy that mentioned that no changes, she's seen no changes in the last seven years. Would you agree or disagree with that? I mean, because I think <laughs> the park having been established five years ago, I think it would like to, to see that there's been so many developments. Well, what do you think on that point? <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think there is a big de de changes. I mean, we we haven't had uh, sook.com seven years ago. I don't know. We we people people were not used to ordering things here online. Now this is picking up. I think this is a difference. Of course, I mean we cannot compare ourselves to advanced uh, 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 and innovative economies like U U.S. But there are many many things happened over the past year, years here. I think there is still a lot to to really improve, and I think this is what we are up to now, and this is why we are having. The session today is really to see how can we use uh, uh, this COVID, uh, uh, you know, to, uh, pandemic to to accelerate 
uh, uh, social development, whether, and I agree with, 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 with Joy in terms of humanity, and, 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 and I think we need so, social acceleration for those owners of companies to, to, and, and shops to accept return goods, and, and, and for people to have a different mindset of, 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 of providing services. And I think UAE and, uh, uh, you, know, you know, set as an example to do so many things today online, uh, you know, with e-government and other things. But I think, yes, the aspiration is high, and I think uh, this is good. And I think uh, we have fantastic opportunity now to really make uh, progresses, I think, and, and accelerate the social and economic and, 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 and cultural uh, uh, development. So I, 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 while I hear uh, Khalud's uh, uh, point, I think well, we've made a, a quite a good uh, development, but we need to do more, I think. Would, would you agree, Khadr? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I agree. It's, uh, you know, um, um, if we, uh, uh, I agree with Joe, I agree with uh, Hassan. Um, uh, you know, uh, Joe, uh, I think in this time, in the COVID time period, we having changed more than the seven years because um, it show us everything. It show us the reality of our life. But if you're talking about Emirates, I think uh, Emirates compare with other countries in Middle East, or um, it will be it's 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 uh, it's more advanced in the technology than other countries. By and but I understand everyone here. We are in the same page because we are looking for globalization. As as Joe mentioned, we need to build bridge between yeah. all the countries not only before Silicon Valley or about China or about any country, we need to be connecting more because one virus coming from other, uh, from China, everyone, it's um, effect. So we have to believe in globalization. We don't have choice because we, when, when someone affects, it's all, it's reach us all. So, but I also, I wish if we can also, um, all the government um, moving or any, any government improvement, it, it's, it's based in, in, the, in big data and analyze the big data to understand or research or uh, coming. Because uh, Joe mentioned it is the education is the base. I agree with that 100%. She said the uh, healthcare is uh, more advanced in America because it's the, it's, uh, the, the, the work between it's coming from the, su the support is going, coming from the education and from the, uh, right. from the uh, uh, universities. I say again, we need also to understand our big data, the research. Uh, what is, uh, the, the data, it will help us to go in the right direction. We cannot, even anyone want to, if I want to go to buy something from the, uh, from the uh, e-commerce, I will do research. I will see where this product, I will compare this product. But government, all government in Middle East or worldwide should be, also looking for big data and more dive in depth in this, uh, uh, in this uh, technology. So you believe that it will give them, I guess, to analyze that big data will allow them to understand the consumer trends, understand what the consumer needs, work out how to make things more efficient going forward. And then that will kind of educate the business community and, and for those startups in different industries to work out what it is that there is a need. Because I think when we started here, Somebody mentioned, I think it might have been Joy, that you have to see what the problem is and then find a solution because that's how you make money. I mean, I think that's where the value is. Um, so I think it's been amazing hearing from you all today. So I, I, I see that there isn't really a consensus. I mean, if we had to ask, because one of the questions that came through from the participants was, you know, which industries do, are you going to see growth? and I sense that, you know, that person that asked a question wanted a hierarchy or an order of, you know, this first, second, third, fourth industry. But what I can see is that, um, and, and if any, any of the panelists uh, don't agree, that really right now it's more about understanding what is going on with the consumer trends, seeing where the gaps are in the ecosystem, 
it's um, the business community and government and private sector really need to come together to bridge those gaps. Um, but there isn't any really one industry that you see is particularly going to boom. We, we heard there's a cross section of health tech, ed tech, ag tech. Um, you know, then we've got the, the, the big data, the clouds, all the platforms. We talked about e commerce. Sorry, Khulud? Printech, it's really fintech, neat. Fintech, yeah, of course, can't forget that one. Um, but so, you know, is anybody game enough to say, or tell the audience what they think. I mean, Joy, Joy gave us some idea, but one of the others, um, is anyone game enough to say, yeah, number one is this industry, second is, and third, or, or at this stage, is there more that we need to see and more analysis that needs to be done with the data during this period? What are your thoughts, Hussein? My, my number one thing that needs disrupting is, is the banking system. So that's yes, my, my fintech is very important. I think fintech, I think in the, in, 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 in the UAE, we will see things uh, like FinTech, which is started quite uh, sometimes. But I think at the moment, I think there will be some focus on healthcare. I think there will be some focus. Uh, Very in interesting. As an opportunity, I think, as an opportunity. I would say uh, 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 there, will be, there will be some development in the health sector. Okay, fantastic, thank you. What I might do now is, because I can see that we've almost been about, well, 55 minutes into the conversation and, the, and we've heard a lot from the panelists. So we've got some questions on the side. I might just ask one of them because interestingly, um, Joy, I was about to ask you the same. And Akash Talreja has said, um, at Joy, it would be interesting to know why you said drones wouldn't work in logistics. I'd like to know too, Joy. <laughs> because we live in, in Dubai or in the whole world? Um, so in the UAE, and I guess if you've got any comments globally, because I don't know where people are, they could be from all over. So in the United States, they drop packages at your door. You don't need a signature. Even if you paid for it with your credit card, they just leave the package in front of your door, which is kind of bizarre to me why they don't do that here, because there's no place on earth safer than the United Arab Emirates. But we don't drop packages in front of the door. <laughs> we, we wait for a signature, especially if you, you paid with a credit card. So I think that the number one reason why, and I'm going to answer the question, is because of COD and because there's all apartment buildings in this area. You can't drop a package in front of someone's apartment. Okay, it's indoors. It's very difficult to do. And second of all, we just don't drop packages. Even, at the, you know, what I just said, which is if you get a package, you need a signature. And third, um, you don't know what's being carried in, in the drone. And drones can only carry a certain amount of weight. And on a government thing, the government doesn't want people flying things overhead because it's kind of not a safety issue. Um, you know, Homeland Security in the United States is, is, is very against drones because you don't know somebody could fly something overhead and land it. It's dangerous. There's a safety issue involved in it. So I think what you said earlier about transporting medicine to, to areas that are difficult to get to, absolutely. But everyday packages that require a signature and proof of delivery here in this region, in a place where no, most people don't live in a home, they live in an apartment, I think it's a very tough value proposition. I think that's a, um, a valid point. Khulud and Hussein, do you have any comments on, or, or yeah, sorry Khulud, is, are you, did you yes. have any? Hussein, go ahead. No, no, I, I agree with Joy. We, we've been exploring uh, uh, some, some attempts with using drones, but it's, I agree with Joy. I think this is the problem. Mm. But, Oh, no, you know, uh, what kind of uh, future application will happen? That's true. That's true. But in terms of, I mean, just speaking now, I'm putting my lawyer hat on. In terms of that regulatory space and um, security, Joy did, um, you know, hit the nail on the head, if I can put it that way. Um, there is sort of a lot of work that needs to be done in that regard before I think we see any drones flying around. Um, but it was interesting just to hear your point. But yeah, I mean, when I was talking about drones, I was looking at in rural, but you're right, also... Um, if there's anything that's going to be a solution here um, for the problems that you were mentioning before, drones probably isn't the solution in the, in the city in, in Dubai, not, not at this stage, not for a while. Khalid, did you have any um, comments that you wanted to make about that or did you more well, or less agree with Joy? Yeah, I agree with the both of them. It's, I think uh, I don't have, uh, it's very government, usually the government did not prefer this uh, um, I don't know. It is maybe exclusive for government. 
everywhere. <laughs> yeah. in marriage, even in Jordan, even in uh, they, it's use it uh, like I see in China how they use our other countries. It's be more uh, accessible for everyone, but here I think it's uh, not secure. I don't know. It's mm. not uh, <laughs> something I interest me. Okay, that's so it. I, I just wanted to say that this bridge between Silicon Valley and Dubai is something that I'm working on, which is what I did. And it's something that I'm working on. So, and I think it's very important that we shine a light from Silicon Valley to the startups in this region, which is completely my next stage of what I'm doing and my biggest passion with startups. So if there are startups out there who need help, I've, I've helped over 200 startups um, and, and glad to, to help. It's, it's a passion. Glad to help any startups who need, who need, uh, need help. You can always reach out to me. Thank you, Joy. Uh, another question has just come through. So we might just have a quick look at that. And I think it could be one for Hussein or maybe not. Let me, oh yeah, because it deals with robots. So um, Murtada has said, we need to focus on robust logistics system. Do things that UAE ready to apply that robot, oh, sorry, I think it's, do you think that UAE is ready to apply the robot deliveries? And what is the capability that must be present? Um, now, so Hussein, what's your opinion on, on robot deliveries? Have you come across that? What's the trend? Um, what's Charger Park? What's Charger Park's view on, on, on that? Oh, it's muted. Oh, sorry. I'll try to unmute. It depends, it depends what do you mean by, by robot. If, it's your, if, uh, if you are considering drone as a, as a robot, then <laughs> I think we have that. I think, I think it depends on the on the on the application. Uh, many many. Uh, if you are talking about supply chain, then many factories now trying to use uh, various type of uh, robots and autonomous uh, robotics to basically help with the uh, legislations. Uh, sorry, with the with the transportations and logistics. Uh, so it depends on on on. On robotic, we have a very exciting project at uh, the park, which is next generation train system, and some of them are uh, uh, autonomous. So, uh, if you visit the park, you will see those uh, Skyway pods. Now uh, we finished the phase one. Now we're going to phase two, which is has to do with cargo. Uh, some of them are uh, autonomous. Uh, 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 cars, so so it depends how you uh, uh, apply uh, those uh, uh, robots and to what. Mm -hmm. That's a good. Yeah, I think point. it's kind of a vague question. Like robots is such a big word, right? What does that mean? Yeah, true, um, very true. But I think I think Hussein made some valid points in that regard. Mm -hmm. I think we have another question. Um, again, it's all around logistics. Joy, I think you've hit a sweet spot there. When I have you a question. That, here. When you raised sorry. that issue. Sorry? Was that Khalil? No, go ahead. Okay. Um, so what is the I, reason? Sorry, sorry, Khalil. I have, sorry. I have a question here. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Not audience. Uh, do, do you think you will go cinema soon? What about entertainment? How it will change after COVID-19? Yeah, interesting question. I mean, if you're personally asking me, I'm a cinema lover and I love it. I I I'll like be going back as soon as they open those cinemas. Um, but most yeah. people, a lot of people won't. I mean, um, and, you know, we could probably see now with like Netflix and all these other, you know, entertainment um, platforms, they're definitely been uh, booming through, through COVID and online gaming. And that's a complete um, other area as well. So, yeah, I think there are definitely industries that we didn't touch on today. I mean, even ag tech in terms of food security. I mean, look at what, what as soon as COVID hit, I mean, even if we don't look at the UAE, but we look globally what happened. I mean, I know for one, I'm from Australia and it was crazy the stories that we were hearing about people going mad in the stores, trying to buy everything on the shelves because they thought that there'd absolutely be no more supplies. I mean, and that's a place like in Australia where anything can be grown. I mean, and then you look at the UAE where during this time you think, Again, we, we thought, oh my God, if Australia is going through that, what's going to happen in, in the UAE? But thankfully, um, we've got such great leadership that there was nothing to worry about here. But even when we look at, you know, food security, 
what can be grown, how can we grow? So that completely opens up to an industry of ag tech that, you know, today we didn't really delve into as well. But so I think there's a number of industries. Um, we've spoken about the really hot hot ones today but but I do think that post COVID we will see more than the ones that we've touched on and this is why we'll have the tech um, tech webinar series and we'll look specifically at different industries um, and the impact of technology on those so we obviously can't cover everything today um, I, I noticed that we've already gone over an hour and people have already got webinar fatigue from probably listening to so many other webinars so we'll have to cut this one um, short but I will take just the last question because we did promise that it would be an interactive webinar um, hopefully you found it to be interactive so far, but I'll take the last question. What is the reason DHL is calling the client before delivery to ask for the location? In Holland, I think in most countries in the world, the address is already known by ordering the product. What is the technical reason this is different in the UAE? Joy, maybe you can, maybe you can <laughs> ask this one because you, you seem to be Kevin, quite well versed. Logistics, huh? Um, Guys, there, there is a problem with no addresses and, and half the world's population has no formal addresses. So it's very difficult to uh, find the person and, and deliver the product. I think the biggest problem, and, and again, getting back to it, is cash on delivery, you need to collect the cash. So you have to make sure that the person is home. Because the transaction in the United States, when you swipe your credit card, the transaction takes place on the laptop. So it, the money is done, it's over. Okay, where in, in, in this country, the transaction doesn't take place on the laptop. The transaction takes place at the door when somebody knocks and says, give me the money. So the problem is, is that in order for the transaction to happen, it only happens when you knock on the door and you get a hold of the customer. That's why it's so important. Oops. Not only do you want it, but are you home? Because again, again, why I think FinTech needs to, to really do some stuff here, we've got to get rid of cash on delivery. We just got to. That's a big reason why we call. Because if you're not home, there's no delivery. We need the cash. Hmm. COD, 97% of all deliveries are cash. Are you guys shocked by that number? I am because I mean, I. I'd have to say that I've probably ordered a few things online and they've come, but I've paid for them online, like either through PayPal or credit card or whatever other system is being used. And I just get the product to the door and I just have to, as you say, sign that, yep, I've received. You're not the, but, you're not the exception to the rule because you're, you come from a country where using a credit card online is more acceptable. Middle Eastern people have a, a, a custom and a culture on cash on delivery. It's a, it's a, it's a habit. And the hardest thing to do is change a habit. It is the hardest thing to do is to get somebody to change behavior. This is the behavior of this region, which is why if there is such thing as a FinTech uh, solution that'll disrupt it, it'll definitely change e-commerce forever in this region. Valid point. <laughs> Hussein's laughing. <laughs> Hussein, what are your thoughts no, on that? <laughs> no, I think in the Middle East we like to check things. <laughs> <laughs> There's a trust issue. Before paying, before paying. <laughs> That's what I mean. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a habit that we do, right? Mm -hmm. But because we don't trust the banks. I mean, I, can I just tell you a, a quick experience that I've had? I came from the United States. I, I buy a, 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 a one dirham bubble gum with a credit card. People from the West coming from the U.S. We use credit cards for everything. I came here, I bought a ticket. And what happened was, is the credit card billed me three tickets. So by accident, I pressed the button on the acceptance. I got three tickets. I went to the bank 50 times. I said, guys, it's one ticket. I'm one person. Can one person travel the same time three times in one day? They said, I'm sorry, you have to pay. You accept it. So people don't trust the banks. They trust like what you said, Hussein. They it's, trust it's a, uh, 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 Joy, it's a mindset. I mean. A mindset. Uh, yes, I, 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 I studied in the U.S. and uh, I, I have many, many fantastic examples. But again, I think it's a mindset. It's a, it or, uh, you know, the social development. Yes. Uh, I think, I think, uh, uh, you know, th there are a lot of also structural cha challenges. I think in implementing what we can implement in Europe and, and in U.S. In my opinion. And without getting into 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 complicated topics now, but, but I, I think we are getting there. 
with what we can, but let's see how, how far we can go as well. Yeah, so well. true, so true. All right. Fantastic, thank you so much. I think we've heard, uh, Khulud, I can see that you might, did you want to say something on this topic? No, okay. Thank you so much, thank you. Great, but no worries. Um, um, thank you all for just we have Just we have very interesting um, uh, s survey about working from home. So I would like to everyone, invite everyone to read it because I think we enjoy work from home. So um, uh, it's showing 75% from, um, from people they would prefer to work from home. Yeah. What do you think, Joy? What do you think, Hussein? What about the food? I am, I am, I can't wait to go to office. <laughs> I can't wait to go to the office. <laughs> we we'll have to do an article about how much weight as a country we can collectively gain from uh. going to the No, no. no. Just, to, just to make a light note. No, you can time. go gym. You can go to the gym. You can give your time to drive one hour to office. Yeah. You can go gym. Yeah. <laughs> what you do in office, you jump? <laughs> I have a sign. I have a sign in my refrigerator, Hussein. And, and you guys will laugh. I open it up, and it's a it's a piece of paper, and it says, "Joy, you're not hungry. You're bored." <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh! <laughs> uh, Very interesting. Thank you. It's all really, really nice and uh, conversation. Thank you. Thank you, thank you all. Thank you, the panelists, and thank you for the participants for joining us. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to have weekly webinars where we're looking at specific um, industries and the impact of technology. And hopefully in those, um, we're also going to look at the regulatory landscape. So it may not be as interesting, as fun as this one, but do please follow us um, on LinkedIn and keep um, posted on the upcoming webinars. And let us know if there's anything in particular that you want to hear about, because I think that the more um, we know what people would like to hear, the more relevant we can make our webinars. Um, so thank you. Stay safe thanks to the panelists and I look forward to thank speaking you. with you all again thank, thank you, you so much thank you Joy. thank you Soraya thanks bye-bye thank you bye. thank you all <laughs>